Hello and welcome back to the uh, March of the Machine set review. This one is going to be on the red cards. Uh, this is a set review for limited specifically. And uh, I'll be talking about the cards in these five tiers. And just so you can see them, let me show you the whole piece of the, the wording there. Uh, basically tier one through five, one is the best, five is the worst. So cards will be sort of sorted into these categories. And... Uh, I'll be looking ahead to see how good I think they are. Um, a disclaimer that I'm not actually like that. <laughs> my my t my uh, my takes are not going to probably be especially enlightening, but uh, the hope is that this is going to make me better at evaluating cards at some point. We'll, we'll see someday. Maybe I'll get there. Um, <laughs> but for now, just kind of an exercise in, in doing preview stuff, which, uh, which I enjoy doing. All right, let's get into it. Uh, starting off with an absolute banger, uh, Aki's Scrap Chomper, one red mana for a 1-1. One, one. You can pay one in a red to sacrifice, tap it and sacrifice an artifact or land, and you draw a card. Uh, this is not, no, this is just a no. Like, it's just not, this is not doing it, you know? This is just not happening, you know? Uh, this is just a card that is, is below power level for Modern Limited. It just isn't. <laughs> it's really slow. Again, there's going to be, there's going to be tons of ways in this set to get card advantage, uh, with transform cards and battles, like there's just as many ways to do that. This is not going to be necessary. Next, Beamtown Beatstick. It's a uh, single red mana for an equipment. A equipped creature has plus one and plus one and has menace, and when a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, create a treasure token. Um, so I'm starting low on this card uh, because it's an equipment, and generally they don't make good equipment. Uh, there's one equipment so far this set that I've been like, oh, it looks pretty good, and it's the white one. Now again, this is one single mana to play and two to equip. If it were two to play and one to equip, I would actually think it would be pretty good, but it's not. So, like I think I do think that this is worse than Gold Vein Pick because it doesn't give plus one plus one. It does give Menace though, so it's harder to block, so it's more likely to get in. I don't know. It, it's probably maybe a tier three card instead of a tier four card, but it's like the the question is really like: Is Red going to want this? Is this a card that Red wants? I guess. Right now, Red is theoretically like aspires to be dealing damage to battles. It's like one of the things it wants to do. I don't know. I'm not sure that that's what Red wants. Red usually wants to go face. <laughs> so uh, we'll see where Red is ends up in uh, this set. Next, Blood Feather Phoenix. One in a red for a 2-2 flying. It can't block. Uh, whenever an instant you cast... Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to an opponent or battle, you may pay single red mana. If you do... Return this from your Griever to the battlefield against haste. So, solid card. It is going to be a little bit of a problem for your opponent, and then you can get it back, but only if you deal damage to them or a battle. There's plenty of ways to do that in the set, so I think that you should be able to retrieve it if you want to, and it's a good way to sort of, like, keep burning people out. I don't know. I think it's just a solid card. Uh, the can't block text is not great, but it's a two mana, two two flyer. Like, but like, what do you want? Right? There's only so much you can do here. Next, Burning Sun's Fury, one in red for an instant with Convoke. Up to two target creatures each get plus two plus seven and get haste until end of turn. The haste on this card, as is often the case, does not matter. Um, so this card is very interesting. I've, like when I first saw the card, I was like, oh, it's terrible, whatever, two mana. Blah, blah, blah. But then I was kind of like, okay, Convoke can allow it to be free. It can be a free spell. And it's like, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of damage. It's a lot, like, four, what, zero mana, four damage is a lot, it's a lot of damage. I, I don't know, I have high hopes for this card. I don't think you'd want a million of them, but I think the first one is, like, kind of decent, right? Like, if you have to pay two mana for this, how bad is it? It's pretty bad, but in, in some scenarios, it's worth it. Like in some scenarios, paying two mana for this is just acceptable. You're like, all right, fine, whatever. They actually like called, and I'll, I'll pay two mana and like trade my one drop for their three drop. And it's like, okay, well, we got we're kind of even on mana there, but I also got one of my other creatures in to hit your battle, and then it got like. like I think a lot of these combat tricks actually get better because they can help flip battles without like your opponent knowing that the battle's gonna get flipped. I think that's that's a big piece of these. So I'm, I'm starting relatively high on this card. Next, Chandra, uh, Hope's Beacon. Four red red for a five loyalty planeswalker. It has a static ability whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell. You copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. These ability triggers only once you turn. Oh, well, thank God. Um, <laughs> plus two is add two mana in any combination of colors. Uh, plus one is exile the top five cards of your library until the end of 
Starting to cast an instant or sorcery spell from among those exiled cards, and minus X, you can deal X damage to, for, to each of up to two targets. So, uh, yeah, this card's just insane. It just does, like, everything you want it to do. I, I, there are questions that, like, is this better than the... Uh, it's just not as good as the Chandra from, what's it called? I don't remember. It's the other Chandra that is, like, this the other six mana Chandra that can't be countered. Um, this is worse than that one. It's probably better in limited, but worse in, like, broad magic. I don't know. card's great. <laughs> the card's just insane, so I don't, there's really not a whole lot to talk about here. Next, City on Fire. Five red, red, red for an enchantment with Convoke. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage instead. This is still too expensive even with Convoke. I don't think it's worth basically taking an entire turn off and tapping your whole board to cast this. And then, like, yeah, you deal tons of damage. Like, you do lots of damage. Um, but, like, sometimes your opponent just has an enchantment removal. Like, there's some incidental enchantment removal around, and it's just like, oh, I guess I'll just lose the game. Uh, it's just uh, taking a turn on. Time walking yourself is very bad and limited. It just is, I think it's just too bad. Like, I just don't, yeah, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not in this card. Next, coming in hot. A uh, single red mana for an instant target creature gets plus one plus one and gains first strike until end of turn, and you scry one. We've seen this type of card before. It's not usually very good. Uh, I don't expect it to be very good here. Uh, that's it. I actually, I don't have any other takes on this card. <laughs> Next, Fearless Skull. Scald, Scald, I don't know. Four and a red for a 3-2 with backup, one and double strike. So this thing gives something double strike when it enters the battlefield. This thing's a problem. Like, this thing's actually a real problem. Now, being five mana is, is a little tough, but, like, giving something plus one, plus one, and double strike until end of turn is, is not nothing when it enters the battlefield. It basically makes the thing unblockable. Or it forces a trade with, like, a trade-up. Like, I... I don't know. I like this card. At first, I was like, ah, oh, this is actually good. It's a five mana three two, but I'm like, ah, oh, it's not really. Cause it's a double striker, so it's it's actually got like some some meat on the bone there. Like it's gonna hang out and be basically like it's really good on block. Like the thing about double strikers is they're actually secretly really good on blocks. Like that's like not what you think about with them, but they're really good on blocks as well. So I do like the card. It does have some, like, protection against, like, just getting removed because you are giving something else that, like, instant... Like, you're doing something when you're in the battlefield. So I do like that quite a bit. Next, Furnace Gremlin. One in a red for a 1-2. It has one in a red to give it plus one, plus one, oh, until end of turn. And when it dies, incubate X, where X is its power. So, at bare minimum, you're incubating for one, which is probably, like, not even good because, like, I don't think you're ever really going to want to transform a card that's incubated for, incubated for one because you're just, like, why are you getting a two-mana one-one? Like, no thanks. <laughs> um, but this plays really well with, like, backup and all of the mechanics in the entire set, and you can pump it. That's also a thing you can do with it, which is nice with, like, battles because your opponent then has to kind of block it because it's like, oh, well, I'll attack your battle, and then it's like, oh, I don't really want to block that thing because it can become a... 3-2, and then trade up with my guy, but I guess I'll block it, because I have to, because I don't want them to flip this thing, and it's, it's, it's incentivizes getting blocked, and I think it's, it's, it, it sort of plays into itself very well, basically. Next, Furnace Host Charger. Five and a red for a 5-5 five, five with haste. It has Mountain Cycling, too. Um, I don't know, I'm not really super high on this card. It's basically a 6 mana, like, 6 six mana, 5-5 five, five haste is not good. And again, I, I think that cycling potentially is not something you ever want to be doing in this set. If cycling is something that you want, is, is okay to do, is acceptable on turn 2, then this card is very, is, like, good. But I just kind of uh, sort of have the feeling that this is going to be another set where it's like, well, you can play a 2 drop on 2, you're kind of just dead. Because uh, you need to be able to flip those battles and protect your battles. Like, so that's, that's just kind of where we're at here. Next, Furnace Reigns. Two and a red for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature until end of turn. It gains haste. And whenever this creature does combat damage to a player or battle created a token. So this is an act of treason upgrade. Um, but it is an uncommon, so you can't rely on getting a bunch of these. However, there is a lot of free sack outlets in black. So this card, I think, is actually going to be very good. Uh, especially, again, this is a card everybody kind of knows how good this card is. Like, it, it has its, it has its decks and it does not it has decks where it is not good. But yeah, in, in red black you're always going to play this. I don't think there's a single red black deck that's not going to end up playing this because red black is a sacrifice deck and it has tons of cheap sack outlets. So this is going to come up quite a bit. Next, hanger scrounger. 
two when I rode it for a two one with backup one. And, this, and uh, when this creature becomes tapped, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Um, that ability is not very good. A three mana two one is not very good. Giving that ability to something else is not very good. It's just not. It's just not interesting. Just I'm just I'm I'm not interested in this card. <laughs> I'm not. But rummaging, but rummaging is good on cards. It's, I'm aware that it has had good moments, but I just like it's like what is like what is the buy the buyout on this is three mana three two, like no, I just I'm not. It's not where you want to be. Next into the fire, two and a red for a sorcery. Choose one. It deals two damage to each creature, planeswalker, and battle, or put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, and then draw that many cards plus one. So. I don't know. I'm not super high on this card. It does have a buyout, but it's a sorcery. It's three mana. Maybe this should actually be... Like, I originally had this higher in, like, tier three, and I was like, yeah, this is a fine average card, and that's probably where it's going to end up, and I should probably just put it there. But I kind of just was thinking, like, ah, when am I ever going to play this in red, right? Like, in red, I want to be pressured. Like, if it kind of, like, is contradictory. Like, dealing two damage to a battle doesn't do anything because it's not flipping the battle in most cases, and you weren't ever attacking the battle because you didn't have creatures on the board because otherwise you wouldn't be casting this. So it just doesn't, I don't, I don't think it deals too damage to your own battles. I think more often than it does to your opponents. I just, I don't, I don't like that. So I think that mode is kind of bad. And then the bottom mode is just like a, not a, it's just your spit in your wheels. Like I just don't, I don't know, I don't see it. Next, Karsus Depth Guard. Two and a red for a 4-3 defender. As long as its power is five or greater, it can attack as though it didn't have defender. I think it's going to be extremely easy to get this thing to have power greater than five, five or greater, because you can just give it a, there's tons of cards with backup on them at common, and there's combat tricks and other stuff. Like, this is just going to be a three mana, four, three. That is, like, I just think that's what it's going to be. Like, a three mana, it's really going to be like a three mana, like five, four, but again, you need to put the counter on it, but like, you're going to do that, like, every time. It's just going to happen every single time, and it's just going to attack. Like, I don't, like, this is not, like, Defender is not on this card, really. If you're building your deck correctly, I think this this card is just insane. Like this card is just really insane, um, because it can just attack so easily. And this card is actually just really strong. Next, Lith Lithomantic Barrage, single red mana for a sorcery. It can't be countered. It deals one damage to target creature or planeswalker. It deals five damage instead of the target is white or blue. Um, yeah, I think this is a main deckable card. I just, it still probably isn't very good because it doesn't hit what you want. <laughs> Again, this sort of like the color hosing stuff. Um, just, they're sort of like weird, but this one is, this one's not especially fantastic. I don't think you really want to play much, many of them. Next, Marauding Dreadship. Two in a red for a 4 1 haste. When it enters the battlefield, it can be two, and it's a vehicle with uh, crew two. No thanks. Um, I don't want a 4-1 vehicle. I just don't. It's just it's too easy to block. Uh, no. It's just not, nothing about this is, is appealing. There's no appealing part of this card. There's nothing like interesting about it. I think it's just just very bad. That's kind of the uh, the take on this card. There's really not a whole lot else to, to think about it. Like it's just like a 4-1 is just you might as well just not be playing a card at that point. Next, Muran Bane Splitter. Single red mana for a flash equipment. When it enters the battlefield, attached to start a creature, you control a creature. It's plus two, plus zero, oh, and it is equipped for three. Nope, these are always bad. Um, this one doesn't even give first strike, so it's just gonna like continue. Like it's just, it's just no, it's just a no. Like the one in uh, AFR like wasn't good. This is worse than that one. I mean, yeah, you can equip for three on the backside. Well, fantastic, like great, happy for you. Like it's just not. This is not it. This is just not. It's just not it. <laughs> it's just. It's too hard to get value out of this because like you never want to equip. You're really going to pay three mana to equip your thing. Your opponent's like deal, right? Like that's that's not going to ever happen and be good for you when it does. You know. Next, the Heroes of Warcrafting. One red red for a sorcery. It deals five damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. Uh, look at the top X cards of your library where X is the excess damage dealt this way. You may exile one of those cards, put the rest on the bottom of your library, and remember you would play the exiled card this turn. So maybe you draw a card off of this. Probably don't. But uh, maybe you do. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just five damage anywhere for three mana is nice. Basically, that's the uh, that's the joke. It's just a really efficient removal spell. Next, Onake Javelinier, 
4 and a red for a 5-4 reach, and you can tap it to deal 2 damage to target player or battle. I like this card quite a bit. Um, now it is 5 mana, right? But it is, again, one of the one of the only ways to sort of get through... You can be like, alright, I'm going to deal 2 damage to the battle. Basically, this thing wants to block, right? Now it is a 5-4, so it doesn't block like that well, but it doesn't block like that poorly. It does have reach. And um, it is being held back, right? Like, I would... The fact that it's 5 mana is, is tough. Because um, it does mean that you're kind of not doing it a little... Like, you, on turn 5, this card is, like, fine. Right? Like, it just doesn't... It is kind of weird where you're like, ah, I'm playing this 5 drop, but I'm, what I'm really trying to do with this 5 drop is block and then start, like, paying my opponent. But it is, like, 2 damage a turn. Like, this, this is a clock. Like, this is a real clock. You know what I mean? This can really be a problem for your opponent if, if you have one of these on the battlefield. Because it's hard, it is difficult to attack into because it does have reach. Um, and uh, it does just start pinging you. It just starts hitting your opponent like every turn. Two a turn is, is quite a bit. So I'm, I'm a fan of it. Next, let's go another card I'm a fan of. Rowl's Reinforcements. One red for a sorcery. Create two, one, one, blue and red elemental creature tokens. This is going to be very good because it plays well with Convoke cards. It uh, is, a, is a spell... It makes two guys to attack battles. This is going to be a really strong card. Like, I really like this card quite a bit. Um, and I just don't see a world where this card isn't insane, basically. Um, it just synergizes with so much stuff in the, the set, and it is a flexible card as well. Next, Ramosian Greatsword. Four and a red for an equipment. It has Convoke. Uh, equipped creature gets plus three, plus one, and it has Trample, and it's equipped for two. So... Not buying it, man. I'm not buying it. Not buying that you want to convoke this card and then tap out and then, and then after you convoke it, you get a three plus three plus one and trample equipped for two. The thing I tried to look for with equipment is like how good is it once it hits the battlefield? Because I can kind of like overpay a little bit for it to get on the battlefield as long as it's really efficient to equip it once it's there. This is not super great. Like, it's fine. It's plus three, plus one, and trample for two. That's probably about the rate that you that I would be happy with. I'd be like, yeah, that's, that's probably okay. Like, that's probably decent. Um, so the once you get it on the board, it's probably a decent card. Now, you got to cast it, though. You definitely don't want to pay five. What is the casting cost I'm happy to pay for this? Two? Three? I don't want to pay three for this. Two? Maybe. Two is, like, Maybe. Pay two, so you gotta tap like two or three creatures, and it's just like taking a turn off to play if it doesn't affect the board, and then I'm getting hit in the face. Is what's happening. So I don't, I don't really like this card. Next, rampaging raptor, two red red for a four four with trample and haste. You can pay two and a red to give it plus two plus zero until end of turn, and whenever it deals da combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target planeswalker that player controls or target battle that player protects. Um, so yeah, you're basically getting a 4 mana 4-4 Trample Haste that can go face while also attacking battles, which is very good. It's a strong thing to be doing um, if you're trying to do battles. It also is just fine to go face. It's just a fine card normally. Next, Red, red Cap Heal Slasher. 3 and a red for a 2-3 with backup 1 and first strike. Like again, I kind of like see these cards and I'm like, these are understated for the backup cards. Like they're understated. Like they're clear. Like Wizards is clearly like, yeah, backup is nuts. Like don't, like don't not underestimate how good backup is because we're making all of these cards look like a little understated. And it's like okay, like I, I trust you. I trust you here. But yeah, this card seems very decent to me. It seems good. Um, getting something plus one plus one for a strike is is strong. ETB just is. It's kind of the take. Scrappy Bruiser, three and a red for a three four one out attacks up to one target attack. Creature gets plus two plus zero and gains trample until the turn of turn into its owner's hand at the end of combat. Returning stuff to your hand is bad. Like I just I don't know what to like. People like returning like this is just no. Like, there's just no. There's just no way that that's true. You know what I mean? Like, it just isn't, it isn't good. Like, it, we just saw this be bad in all of one It is going to be bad again. Like, it just isn't good. Why? I don't know. Like, they couldn't just let it... Like, I understand that it's like, oh, it's going back to your hand. It's going doing cool synergy stuff. But, like, no, it's not. It's never doing cool synergy stuff. It's not happening. <laughs> it's just not happening. Because it also has to be that, like, that specific creature that you want to give plus two, plus O2. Oh like, what if you want to give plus two, plus O2 oh to something you don't want to go back to your hand, and then you have to bring this back to your hand? It's like, I, no, 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 no. 
Searing Barb. Two in a red for a sorcery. It deals two damage to any target. If it's a creature that can't block this turn, it could be one. Nope. <clears throat> this is just not... This is just a very slow card. It just is a slow... Um, it just doesn't... It doesn't do enough. Like, two damage for three mana. It's not good. The can't block text is not... Does not matter. It just doesn't... It's not a thing that is... Um... So it's nothing that's, that's uh, impactful, really. And the Incubate 1, similarly, like... So this is one of those cards where I'm like, well, did they make it bad because it was just too... Like, they made it too good, and we're just like, whatever, screw it, we're making it bad. It's like, okay, fine. Like, like I'm just never gonna... Like, there's just so many better options for removal in red. And it's just sort of like, why couldn't this be an instant? I don't know. Like, it could have been an instant. It would have been fine. It's not. I... Whatever. Next, Shatter the Source. Five in red for an instant with Convoke. You can choose one and deal six damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle, or you destroy target artifact. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this uh, because it has Convoke, basically. And it's also an instant. So you can kind of do the thing again where you can hold up a little bit of some mana, have some creatures on the battlefield, and then you're convoking it, and it's like, oh, this is a really cheap spell now. And I was able to do stuff. And the destroy target artifact text on it's kind of weird, but yeah, it's you could you can. Okay, Curry. I don't think it's Red's best removal spell. I think it's fine. I think you're gonna play it. I don't think you really want too many of them. You probably want like one, maybe two. But it's better than what Red usually gets, which is like a five mana deal five. Like that card's not usually very good. This card is much better than that. Because it can be cheaper when you have the right circumstances. And like if you have to pay the mana. It's not good, but it, it is uh, is serviceable. Next, Shivan Branch Burner, five red red for a four four with Convoke Flying Haste. Um, so basically, so what I was doing, thinking about it, I'm like, right, when am I happy? Well, I'm happy when I get to a five mana Flying Haster for four. That's when I'm happy. Six mana Flying Haster for four is probably still acceptable, like okay, but five mana is really where I'm happy. So I want to have two creatures on the battlefield. That's very doable by turn five. I should have two creatures on the battlefield by turn five. I can get a five, five, four, four Flying Haster for five. So this card is just a four, four Flying Haster for five because your other stuff. Now, yes, your other stuff can't attack that turn. But like, was it attacking anyways? Probably not. It probably, at least one of them probably wasn't. So you're just getting a good deal here, I think. Mostly. Next, Stoke of the Flames, two red red for an instant with Convoke. It deals four damage to any target. This is just going to be very good, efficient removal. Um, Convoke, again, being great. So that's uh, that's nice. That's just a nice thing. It's just what you want. You want your cards to be good. This is good. <laughs> um, see, it's being a very efficient removal spell. Next, Thrashing Frontliner. One in a red for a 2 2 with Trample. It gets plus one, plus one if it is attacking a battle. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're attacking battles, this card's decent. It doesn't block, it doesn't have Trample, so that's nice. So you can, like, it does wear combat tricks well. It wears, uh, it wears backup well. You're gonna want, you're gonna play this card quite a bit. You're gonna play this card very often because it's gonna just be. Like, hey, well, I need a two-drop. This is a two-drop. It's serviceable. I'm happy to play it. Whatever. It's fine. So I think that's, that's kind of where this card ends up, and that's kind of how I've graded it. Like, tier three is sort of uh, that tier of, like, well, you're going to play it a lot. This, you're going to play this card a lot. It just is going to be in your deck a lot. Next, Trailblazing Historian. One and a red for a 1-3 with haste, and you can tap it and give another target creature haste until end of turn. Nope. No thanks. I'm okay. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just not, this, this type of card just generally is not very good. Giving stuff haste is fine when you're a Furnace Strider, but when you're at a 1-3 for 2, it's just not, it's not good usually. It's just not. Uh, now, it being a 1-3, like, is it better? Like, there was one of these cards in, like, called on that was a 2-2 and that card wasn't very good so I'm expecting this to sort of be the same and now it is a 1-3 does that, does that change anything? not to me I don't, not to me really it has haste itself and yeah, I'm just not I'm just not, I'm gonna need to see it to believe it you know? Volcanic Spite 
uh, one in a red for an instant. It deals three damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. If it put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library, if you do draw a card. I, I, I don't know why they printed this card. I, don't, I genuinely have no idea why they put the second like part of text on there. Like it just is just ridiculous. It's just an absurd card. Um, it, the 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 only thing keeping it from being like the most absurd card ever is that it um, <laughs> it doesn't put your card the card in your graveyard. It puts it on the bottom of your library. If it if you could discard a card, oh man, that would be good. Um, it's still a good card though. It's still obviously very good. There's a uh, not a whole lot to talk about. Art artwork is great. I love the art. So that's good. Also. <laughs> Voldaren Thrill Seeker, two in a red for a 1 1 with backup 2. Has the ability to pay 1, sacrifice this creature, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Which is nice in some ways. You really want to just put this on your 2 2 drop and be like, alright, I got a 4 4 for 2 now and I'm attacking. And that's kind of what this does, which is good. That's, that's fine. It's a fine card. You can sacrifice this to like deal 1 to something, and that's like the threat of doing that is nice. So, I don't know, it's fine. It's a fine card. It's nothing special. Next, War Trained Slasher. Three and a red for a 4 3 with Menace, and whenever it attacks a battle, double its power until end of turn. So, its power being doubled pretty much doesn't really matter, right? Four damage is going to remove most of the battles by itself. Like, for the most part, like, you're going to be removing the battle already. Now, for some of them, obviously, it will matter. And when it, like, something blocks, but it's, like, you're, when you're blocking something with three toughness and menace, you're probably only blocking it with stuff that, like, isn't, like, is gonna die to it anyways. Like, maybe, I don't know. I guess, I guess it does sort of, like, two for one your opponent, but then, like, they, you don't get to attack your battle. It also, three toughness, four mana is tough, but, like, you can just, like, removal spells eat this thing up. They eat it up. It's just, there's two deal threes in the set. One in black and one in red. And you're just like, well, it's just like, I don't... This thing just dies to those. If this were a 3-4, I think it would be pretty... It would be much better. But it's not, so... As a 4-3, I'm, I'm just not... I'm not enticed. Next, Ren's Resolve. One in a red for a sorcery. Exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. So this card was good in Vow. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be serviceable here. Uh, so, I don't know. That's kind of my take on it. Like, we've seen it before. It is card advantage. It's basically a two-mana draw two. Um, you can play it and then play a land and then do other stuff. Like, it's just, it's just, it's just good. It's good, like, card draw. If you, there's not a whole lot of, like, spells mattery stuff going on in um, this set at all. But if there were, <laughs> this would be better. It's still fine. I think it's still a fine card. Next, Invasion of Kaldheim. Uh, three in red for a four toughness, loyalty, whatever, siege. Um, when Invasion of Kaldheim enters the battlefield, exile all cards from your hand and then draw that many cards until the end of turn, your next turn you may play cards, exile this way. So yes, theoretically this inspires to draw you a bunch of cards and then it flips into Pyre of the World Tree and you can discard a land card and it deals two damage to any target. And you, when you discard a land card, exile the top card of you and play that card this turn. So this is basically just a mostly pure card advantage battle. Um, I, I think it's a little too finicky. Exiling all the cards in your hand and then being able to cast spells, like, they, that's fine. Like, you're drawing, and you're drawing a bunch of cards. You're probably drawing, like, three cards. Now, you have to cast two of, like, you, t you probably are like actually drawing, like, two cards. You have to cast, you basically have to cast the cards that you just had in your hand, it like puts restrictions on you, your opponent knows what you're going to do next turn, and you're like, how are you flipping this? Like, I don't know, never, because you didn't impact the board. Like, not impacting the board, it's very concerning. So, I don't know, I, I, I have, I'm starting low on this one. Next, Invasion of Acarsis. Two red red for a four loyalty invasion, when it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Um... And the backside is a 4-4 four, four, uh, ward, pay 2 life, and you cast a spell, it deals 2 damage to each opponent. So the backside is real. The backside is very strong. Um, so it's worth flipping. The question is, is the front side playable? <sighs> so, like, again, you're 
dealing three damage to each creature and each planeswalker, which means that you're removing all of your ability to attack this battle the turn that it comes down. Probably, right? So this means that your opponent gets a turn to protect the battle, and then, like, you're going to be trying to flip this one. This is one that you're going to be trying to flip. And my question is, how often can you do that? Because obviously, like, the deal threes to every, the deal three, like, wrath type things tend to be very situational and not very good. So this, I think, again, kind of falls into that category of, like, well, if you could flip it, that would be fantastic. If you could just, like, cast the backside, it would be good. But <laughs> if you just, like, cast the backside for, like, five, it would be, like, a strong card. But you can't do that. And so it's, it's just weird. I don't, I don't think it gets there for me. Next, Invasion of Mercadia. One and a red for a four loyalty uh, battle. And when there's a battlefield, you may discard a card if you do draw two cards, and it transforms into a 3-3 three, three, uh, with two and a red to tap and discard a card to create two blue one. Blue and red elemental creature tokens. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and can't haste until end of turn. And be advised, uh, you, just keep, you, just, you just keep the tokens. They don't, like, it's not like until end of turn. You get to keep the tokens. You do have to discard a card, though. So... Yeah, I mean, we saw this card be really good in Bro, right, in Bitter Reunion, but uh, and Bitter Reunion was just really strong. You didn't have to play, you didn't want to play Bitter Reunion on two, and you don't want to play this on two, but yeah, just the ability to get to see more cards in your deck and discard stuff and put stuff in your graveyard maybe and whatever, like it's just it's like a good, it's just a good filtering card that it's likely to have synergy again here, um, and uh, it should be good. It makes you can get guys out of your, your stuff, so I like it. Invasion of Ragatha. Two and red for a five loyalty battle. When it enters the battlefield, it does full damage to another target battle or opponent. And one damage to up to one target creature, and it flips into a 4-4 four with prowess, which is big. And when an on creature spell, you control and deal damage to that creature. It battle or opponent it deals that much damage plus two instead. So this thing getting flipped is big game. Like, you want to flip this pretty bad, because the backside of it is very strong. Um, you also need to be playing other battles. Like, this card... If you do not have other battles on the battlefield, this card is awful, like terrible. If you do, I think it's actually good. So if you meet the critical threshold to that, I would say that the card is certainly has potential to be very good. Um, but if you don't meet it, it's going to just be completely unplayable, and you're going to be sad that you have it. <laughs> but the dealing one damage to one target creature is great. Like when everything lines up, this card is just super amazing. Just busted. But when it doesn't line up, it's just kind of like you have concerns about it not lining up, basically, is kind of the, the concern. So that's why it's in tier three. Next, Invasion of Tark here. One on a red for a five loyalty battle. When it enters a battlefield, reveal any number of dragon cards from your hand. You do, when you do, it deals to X plus two damage. In your target, where X is the number of cards revealed this way. So it's pretty much just a deal two. Transforms into a 4 4 flying trample, and whenever a dragon you control deal attacks, it deals 2 damage to any target. So, whenever this attack, it deals 2 damage to anything. It's mostly a removal spell that's slightly inefficient, and you get upside later in the game to make a big giant dragon guy. That's why it's tier 2, just because it's, it's a little tough to flip. I don't really know why they don't let this target itself. Like, it's only 2 damage. I probably would have let it target itself, but whatever, fine. Design choices moment. Next, a lot of Atali, Primal Park Conqueror. Uh, it is a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven trample. Um, when it enters the battlefield, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an online card. You may cast any number of spells from one of the cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. And then you can pay 9 and a green vertex to transform it into a... Um, Blightsteel Colossus. <laughs> um, literally the exact type line of... Well, not the exact... The exact text of, uh, basically, Blightsteel Colossus on the back. Uh, yeah, this card's insane, if you cast it, obviously. Like, if you ever cast... Like, if... Like, the real question is not whether or not this card's insane. The question is whether or not Red wants to cast a 7-mana spell. If Red wants to cast a 7-mana spell, this is a Tier 1 card. There's no, like... There's no, like, denying that. But I think that the idea of casting a 7-mana spell in red is, is always something that that has dubious. It's a dubious idea. It may or may not be something that you want to do. So, if it's something you want to do, this card is fantastic, and it's going to be fantastic, no matter what. 
but Fred's not trying to support casting seven mana spells. It's going to be like a weird fit, I guess. Um, it's kind of my viewpoint on it. Next, Harried Artisan. Uh, two and a red for a two-three with haste. You can pay three and a white Phyrexian to transform it. Uh, it transforms into a three-four flying haste. So, yep, it's fine. It's whatever. Like I don't know. I don't. I don't especially love this card. Neither of the sides is especially efficient. Like your yes, you can transform it into a flying haster. And that's good and all that. And it gives you card advantage and yada yada. But like the front side just isn't very good. Basically, like a three, a two mana three three. Three mana, two, three, haste is just not good. Like, that's just not a good card. So, like, that card by itself is probably tier four. And so I'm bumping it up a tier because it can transform. That's kind of it. That's kind of, that's why it's there. <laughs> Next, Kenra Spell Spear. One and a red for a two, two trample prowess. And you can pay three and a blue to transform it. Uh, and it transforms into a three, three trample ward two prowess prowess. Like, this, this card is just straight-up gas. Like, I... This card is insane, right? Like, Trample Prowess... First of all, Trample Prowess is just an insane, like, type line. That that... Like, the front side of this card is, like... Is a Tier 2 card by itself. And then you can, like, on turn 3, be like, Alright, I'm gonna, uh, flip this. And then your opponent's like, Oh, man, that's a problem. Because it's got Ward... Now it has Ward 2. A Double Prowess, and it still has Trample. Like, it's just... This thing is just dealing so much damage. This thing is just dealing so much damage. Like, how... I don't even know how you can deal this much damage. Like, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know how you're doing This is just ridiculous. This is a ridiculous card. Next. Paretic Prankster. One and a red for a 2-1 with... Uh, that's literally it. And then you can transform it for 3 and a black Phyrexian and to a 3-2 that when it dies, each opponent sacrifices an artifact or creature. This is terrible. This is not good. <laughs> this is not a good card. Don't, don't play this card. Like, why are we paying 5 mana and 2 life to make a 3-2 that when it dies, each opponent sacrifices an artifact or creature? Like, I just, that's just not. That's just not it. That's not, that's not where we want to be. That's not, that's not, uh, that's not good. That's simply isn't good. So, not the best. Not the best of them. And the last card in red is Urbrask. Uh, the Praetor. Um, two red red for a 4-4 four, four first strike. And when you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Urbrask does one damage to target opponent. Add red mana. And then you can pay a single red mana and exile it and return to the battlefield transformed as this uh, saga that deals three damage to target opponent and each creature they control it creates three treasure tokens and it does a bunch of other stuff like graveyard stuff transforms back into Ur brass, all kinds of good stuff but you can only do that if you've uh, cast three or more instant or sorcery spells this turn which is never happening and limited so don't worry about it uh, the front side is just tier one though by itself like four for a four four first strike that uh, whenever you Cast an instant sorcery spell, deal one damage to target opponent, and then you add a red mana is really great. Like it just makes all your instants and sorceries cheaper. So, yep, good card. Doesn't really make them cheaper. It makes them like I know it doesn't really make them. I'm aware, but it's a good card. Okay, I promise. I promise the card's good. And uh, with my promise that Urbrask is a good card, uh, we are done with this this color this set review. We'll continue rolling on, but. Uh, Hopefully you garnered some insight from this. It seems unlikely, but hopefully you did. <laughs> I usually do, uh, just because I, I read. It forces me to read the cards again after I read them and put them in here and then grade them, and then I'm like, ah, no, I actually wanted to grade them like this. So, uh, yeah. See you.